Right, welcome back to Morning Love. As I mentioned earlier before we took a break, the situation in Turkana County and Baringo County, as the country is aware that uh, it's not actually very funny because the hunger situation is taking a toll on so many Kenyans and lives are being lost on the ground. It means studio I'm joined by Mark Bichachi, who is also part of, of the um, cocoon that is actually making sure that uh, guys are served from Baringo County. Of course, his, uh, his entry actually will start with Baringo. And of course, later on, maybe when we know or when, when you tell us, we'll actually know if you're going to Turkana or something. But of course, he'll be joined by Calvin Kiprono from the Kajariko Society, who have been on the ground to now tell us more about what is happening. The billions of shillings promised haven't been delivered yet. So what is happening? So many things happening in this country. And of course, Mark Karibu Sana. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Twice in this in a week you Absolutely. wake up. Absolutely. You need to be here. You need to be here. <laughs> the, the, it's a purposeful driven conversation. Yes, it now, is. Now, um, billions, of course, released mm. once again. No one has received anything. Yeah, we thought maybe this thing is an emergency. Mm. But somehow we are finding a situation where also no one has actually just uh, been so quick to make sure that uh, it reaches the ground. Well, it is an emergency to us, the citizens, because we found out, A, just a week ago, and B, the people on the ground are actually in dire straits. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not an emergency for government because it has the tools and apparatus to be aware of the hazards that were coming this year. So to them, it should not have been an emergency. We should not see uh, funds being released uh, late in the day because they knew this thing was uh, going to happen. And if they had acted sooner, it would have been cheaper for them. Uh -huh. It would have been cheaper to mitigate against against these issues. But it's things where they stand, of course, the situation on the ground is dire. If you are in Nairobi, you know the temperatures are high. So you can imagine uh, how high the temperatures are in those uh, arid and semi-arid areas. And you can imagine uh, that temperature that high without access to water. That, of course, uh, means that people's lives are in danger. Mm -hmm. And I think the argument of whether people are dying or not is, is misplaced. The argument should be, are people in, in, in a risk of famine? Yes. Are people in risk of dying uh, because of lack of water and food? Yes, they are. And should we do something about it? Yes, we should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, the, the political angle, yes. because now when you see these um, billions being released, taxpayers' money mm. being released to go and, of course, sort these guys out, mm. the urgency, <clears throat> how is the urgency? Of course, someone was asking, you'll take unga, mm. but there's no water. Yes. Yeah, that's a very, very powerful <laughs> question. Now, it's a potent question, because you see, the biggest problem actually on the ground is that there is no water. Uh, even basic science tells you that you can live about a month without food, but you can live three, four days to a week maximum yeah. without water. Yeah. So the biggest and most pressing issue is water, which is why in my campaign we are, we are going to go with bozas of water to this particular village okay. and see whether we can get uh, the water on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest issue. How much water can you get there and then how much food uh, can you get there? And, and it's not such a difficult exercise for the most part, but there are areas in that region which, uh, one, are dangerous because of insecurity, uh, and, and two, have very bad uh, road networks. So it makes it very hard to deliver things. Okay. But I am sure that they'll get there on time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, humanitarian uh, works because now, of course, you're expecting Kelvin Kipro from Kenya Records to be here. Um, we, we've seen some of them even complain mm -hmm. that indeed the, the road network infrastructure is not very supportive just to make them actually reach these people. Yes. It has taken them days, even weeks actually to go in. And the resistance, there's now a, a kind of tension between these two communities who need help. Yes. What is happening now? You see, the, the issue is that, number one, you've got, you've got infrastructure problems. Then you've got the tribal uh, tensions that exist between the Turkana Pokot and pockets of the Kalenjin community, who are usually cattle wrestle each other, and the level of distrust is very, very high. Number three, you've got the fact that the police uh, presence is very scanty, and, and government power is not felt as strongly yeah. uh, in these regions. And then you've got the politics of poverty 
party and the politics of, <coughs> of donor aid. Let's mm -hmm. let's be very clear that yeah. uh, the, the politicians and certain entities who profit mm -hmm. from making sure that these cycles continue every year, which is why mm -hmm. any person who's going down to the ground, I always suggest look for long-term solutions sure. because these short-term solutions exist because you constantly want food uh, the food uh, organization to send food every every year. Mm -hmm. You want to receive donations from the European Union. So there are people who profit from the poverty of others. Let's sure. just be very honest. Sure. There are lots of people who profit from that. That is why it is important for we as citizens to look at the problems of our brothers and seek to fix them permanently versus fix to just sending unga, like you've seen, yeah, yeah. without thinking about the water and, and fix the drought situation without thinking about the flood that's going to come to the same region yeah. in, in, in a few days' time. Mm -hmm. So it's time again also that we began to ask the government the critical question. Mm -hmm. What is the permanent solution mm -hmm. government is doing? Sure. Seven billion, nine billion, whatever it is they're sending on the ground is mm -hmm. all good and well, mm -hmm. but it's not going to solve the problem. Yeah. Well, how else can we spend these seven, nine billion to make sure these guys have options? And, mm -hmm. and, and there are three main solutions. Solution number one, mm -hmm. as far as government is concerned, is to make the agriculture in this place viable. How yeah. do you make the agriculture viable? There's the government insurance scheme against uh, livestock death mm -hmm. and drought. What are they doing with that? There's the offtake of these animals that was proposed by government and done in 2017. I don't know why it's not being done now where you'd take uh, these animals and pay these guys so mm -hmm. that they, you mitigate against against hunger. Mm -hmm. uh, there's number three. Uh, as we wait to build the huge dams that uh, uh, we want to build, why aren't we building water pans? Why aren't we building smaller dams that can hold smaller amounts of water and still help uh, these people? So there are permanent solutions that need to be done and the government needs to come out and tell us what's going on with the Big Four agenda. Mm -hmm. Food security is mm -hmm. one of the key issues issues because you look at places like Wasingishu, uh, which uh, have food in, in, in excess, but that food cannot be transported to this area because we've not thought about the road network. So mm -hmm. government actually needs to put to, to, put to be put to task to explain what are the long-term mitigations yeah. against these issues. Okay. Now, when the government actually comes out and sees uh, no death has been reported, um, where I'm seated is kind of a shame. Mm. And uh, it's 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 very it's very interesting to note that uh, as much as we're trying to kind of uh, sugarcoat and uh, uh, the, the PR angle of every aspect of this situation, do you think it's fair for the residents in these counties who are suffering for a government official, senior government official, to come out in the media and tell people that so far, no reported deaths? in this region? Uh, it's, it's a very ill-advised strategy. It's an mm -hmm. ill-advised strategy for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, the government has a lot of egg on face mm -hmm. based on how NCPB has handled maize. Okay. It has egg on face in sugar. It has mm -hmm. egg on face on so many scandals that it has faced. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is very unstrategic for them to come out Mm -hmm. I'd come out with two press conferences, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, different talking points in both press conferences. They, they, they don't look united. Okay. They look like they're, they're posturing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is ill-advised mm -hmm. for you to come out to say mm -hmm. that yes, there is famine, yes, there is hunger, but no yeah. one has died. Yeah. You know, it is not death that makes it a, a, a crisis. A serious or not. thing. Let, yeah. Let's be yeah. honest. Eh? Yeah. What makes it a problem is the fact that people do not have water. Yeah. Okay, if today you and I were seated here and we've not had a drink of water for two days, we would be hallucinating. We'll be, we'll not be able to talk. We'll not be able to move. So clearly, it is not the fact of death. It is the fact that people are hungry. People are thirsty. People are facing serious famine uh, conditions. So let's not argue whether it's one person or zero people or eight people. I, I think that's a very misplaced uh, conversation. <coughs> and if the government is serious, like I said before what they should be telling this country is what they're going to do to completely fix the situation because okay. it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, w with, with the fact that even the country now is aware of what is happening in these mm. counties, do you think preparedness? You've mentioned flood. Mm. Yes, now, of course, right now you're talking about the, 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 yes. the, the hunger issue and all those things mm. affecting these guys in Turkana and Baringo counties. Now, in a few months' time, it will be very different. We're mm. talking about a different case. Yes. Preparedness. You know, it will cost the government a little to actually now go through this out once we are prepared. 
But why do you wait to the 11th hour or maybe just the 12th hour itself to come out and of course just try to salvage everything that's actually now kind of in tatters? But you see, the issue is in this country, we, we have a, a leadership that is immune from the decisions and the ravages that we Kenyans face. I'll, I'll give you an example. The Minister of Transport is never stuck in traffic. Okay. Sure that. Uh, the Minister of Health does not need to take her children or her relatives to Kenyatta Hospital. Okay. Similarly, the Minister of Devolution has does not remember the last time he spent a night without eating. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the truth is that the lethargy we see in government is not because they did not have information in advance. It is not because the resources were not available. It is because as a people, and, and this is true not only of government, it's uh -huh. true of almost every other Kenyan, okay. is as a people, we like to respond last minute. Mm -hmm. Have you ever realized that in a lot of the fundraisers, there's no more money fundraised for you when you are dead yeah. than for you when you are in the hospital bed? That's true. That's Why? True. Because we like last minute. And, mm -hmm. and that's how we are as a people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we need to correct is we need to change how we perceive aid and assistance, mm -hmm. okay? In both on a government level and a, and a, and a, uh, and citizen level. Mm -hmm. On a government level, mm -hmm. most governments mm -hmm. across the world are prepared for disaster mm -hmm. because you know what kind of disasters affect your people. Okay. Like this is a perennial problem. We mm -hmm. know that annually we will have these problems. Mm -hmm. So government should be prepared and have those resources on the ground even before. You, they should not be saying they are, they are sending from Nairobi. Sure. They should say they are sending from the county headquarters mm -hmm. because it was already ready. Mm -hmm. But the second thing as citizens mm -hmm. is Kenyans in general, even when you look at children's homes and our NGOs, they're mostly funded by Europeans and Americans. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. Kenyans in general are not plugged into the, the, the need to help their society. Mm -hmm. If you ask a Kenyan when was the last time they visited a children's home, they'll tell you Christmas or their birthday. You wonder whether these children in the children's home only yeah, eat when yeah. it's your birthday yeah. and it's Christmas. Yeah. You are traumatizing yeah. these kids. Absolutely. So they have to pray for your birthday to come mm -hmm. so that they can mm -hmm. eat. What are they supposed to do it's with other 363 days of the year wow. so we have wow. a culture mm -hmm. where we don't help people okay. and this is the problem with uh, Nairobiism with the middle class in this country which mm -hmm. I'm who I'm calling out because even your relatives you don't pick their calls mm -hmm. and then we only want to help when things are bad yeah. and even when we are helping we try and say oh but the government should have done but mm -hmm. I wonder the United States of America don't we see people mm -hmm. donating mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. a Hurricane Katrina and the other hurricanes wow. that are there. Wow. So let's let's stop this two-faced thing. Okay. If you're going to be mean and not help people, just mm -hmm. be mean and not yeah, help people. Yeah, yeah, Don't sure. say you paid taxes. You know, let's stop lying to people here. Interesting. And of course, <laughs> those guys who carry their cameras to the children's home. Yes. Yeah. Because it's, it's a selfie yeah, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, I don't know, but you guys, leave your It's not that you don't know, yeah, sir. Yeah, let me put the words you can't say. Oh, I really, can't let, say let, let's take a break. Those are slay queens. <laughs> <laughs> kings. Let's take a break. Now, it's something funny because now, uh, just uh, around, I'll, I'll, let last year, the Trukana County government had set aside, uh, last week actually, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, set aside 20 20 million Kenyan shillings uh, for the cultural festival uh, slated uh, for next month. That is 25th to 27th. Now, at this misplaced priority, 20 million for cultural festival, but you still have a problem in the same county. All that will be coming to you after a short break with Mark B. Church. We hope Kevin Kiprono will be here in a few. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And as I told you earlier, you're now joined by Calvin Kiprono, uh, Programs Officer, Emergency Operations at the Kenyan Rico Society. And of course, they've been re receiving reports firsthand. And he's here to tell us about what's on the ground. Um, of course, uh, the government through the CS came out and said, no debts, which is very uh, kind of strange. Maybe you can tell us what's happening. Um, thank you for having me. So I'll start by saying that uh, the, the drought situation in the country is real. 
we have uh, a drought that has affected uh, a number of people. First of all, there are phases of drought. So usually there is the normal phase in which mm -hmm. people have food. Then you will have uh, IPC2, which we usually say is starting to be, you know, the alert, the IPC phase 2. So at, in that phase, we have 5.4 million people facing that kind of drought, which means they are not eating the normal number of foods in a day. Okay. So uh, this number of people, you will find them, you know, missing maybe two meals and eating one meal a day. Mm -hmm. And when you go to IPC3, this is when now people start missing meals for a number of days. It is no longer, you know, eating one meal per day. You can stay even for three days without eating. People in IPC3 currently are about 800,000 people in the country. Mm -hmm. So um, we are generally we are talking about millions of people facing food, different phases of food insecurity. But usually the one that we take very seriously is when you start IPC2 and, and you get to 3 mm -hmm. is when you have to intervene to save people. Because if you don't, then uh, those people end up ex now starting to experience uh, you know, uh, malnourished, uh, yeah. be becoming malnourished, you yeah. know, and, and starting to develop illnesses yeah. from um, uh, the lack of food. Because yeah. if, you, if you're going to stay for three, four days without a meal, yeah. then, um, you know, you can be sure that you will start experiencing effects. And, and uh, that's why you see images of people who are seriously sure. malnourished. Sure, sure. Yep. Okay. Now, um, Mark, um, th that means there's a problem. And as much as the C is said in a local television station that indeed uh, there's no actually no deaths have been reported, yes, we talked about it. But uh, when you talk about 20 million Kenyan shillings put aside for cultural activities in the county that is suffering, do you think they should still they should continue with this activity? Because the guys who are supposed to celebrate the culture are hungry. Maybe the governor wants to celebrate the culture of hunger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only logical conclusion you can draw. <laughs> because unless you consider hunger yeah, culture, yeah, yeah. there's no way you would give 20 million shillings for a cultural festival. Sure. Right? So we need to understand, and, and I said this before, that we have a political class that is grossly insensitive to the plight of her own people. Mm -hmm. let's, let's be clear. That if, if, you were, if you had the number of 5.4 million people mm -hmm. who are not having regular meals a day, yeah. and you ask yourself, not even in a drought situation, mm -hmm. there's always a percentage of Kenyans who are in that situation. Yeah. And they're not even far from Nairobi. They're over here in Kibera. Sure. They're here even in Kuru Kwanjenga. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, we are such an insensitive country that we do not realize that our people suffer on a daily basis. Sure. This is this is the truth. My yeah, colleague yeah. here, I'm sure, will confirm the same. Mm -hmm. So we've become a people that are so insensitive mm -hmm. to these problems that we are offended that the media can dare show it. Uh, not because it is not happening. Mm -hmm. Because the government has not said there's no drought. Okay. They've not said that people are, are, are not malnourished. Mm -hmm. They're not saying that people do not have access to nutrition. Mm -hmm. They're simply saying, let's argue about how many of them have died. As though living a life where you cannot eat three square meals a day mm -hmm. is a lifestyle that is acceptable for a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. That is my problem. Because mm -hmm. it is not acceptable. Even if that person is not dying, but he cannot e afford to eat every day, mm -hmm. then what kind of country is it still then? Okay. So can we say that because we are keeping you barely alive, mm -hmm. we are doing our job as, as a country? Mm -hmm. Hell no. Absolutely. Now, Kelvin, solutions to this, because now when we, we, we mentioned this earlier, when you take unga without water, mm -hmm. that's nothing. Yeah, that's yeah. nothing, actually. Mm -hmm. When you give someone sugar only, that's nothing. Yeah. So, um, priorities, actually. W what needs to be done here? Because as people on the ground, you know what's happening. And trust me, I'm seeing, um, I hope you're not also taking unga without water. <laughs> I, I told you, I'm taking, <laughs> I'm going there with bozas of water. That's ah, actually my biggest perfect, priority. Perfect. Yeah. Now, so that, uh, that's the angle, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're seeing unga relief food coming in, but is there water? We're seeing just people drinking dirty water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate now. Priorities and so structures, yeah. Like, um, you know, usually for, for the drought situation, what you need to do is basically, there's kind of actions that we should take to prevent us from getting to where we are in the first place you know, um, have some of these irrigation farming in these areas because you go to Trukana, you find very vast land and, and land that has potential to produce enough food to feed mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, investment uh, into, you know, prior 
to the drought coming, mm -hmm. you you go and measure that and you find it to be you know s not really to the levels you would want, sure. you know that uh, anyone would expect. Yeah. And so there are some of those actions. But now that we are in the drought situation, yeah. for us as Kenya Red Cross, what we are doing is um, we are sending cash to, mm -hmm. to these communities. Okay. Because the kind of uh, food insecurity you see in this country mm -hmm. is not really about um, lack of food, but okay. rather access to food. Mm -hmm. There is food, you know, you have farmers in the North Rift who did not have their maize, mm -hmm. you know, who still have mm -hmm. thousands of sacks of maize, mm -hmm. no one uh, th that were not sold to the NCPB. Yeah. And so if you, if you empower these communities to get the cash, they can be able to, to you know, to go and buy food yeah. in the shops because okay. you'll find food there. But <coughs> mm -hmm. the only problem is that okay. when the drought comes, it destroys the income, you know, mm -hmm. the livelihoods of these people, yeah. they are yeah. cattle, yeah. and therefore they can't sell milk, which mm -hmm. would allow them to get money to go and buy commodities, and mm -hmm. they can no longer produce because it's, it's dry. Okay. So at that time, they depend on the market, and therefore oh. for us, we are seeing you know, giving these communities cash to be able to buy that. Okay. We are also doing uh, health and nutrition outreaches. First of all, um, what you will realize is that when you find someone who is uh, malnourished, okay. you can't come and, and, and uh, give them ugali. There is some sort of uh, supplementary feeding mm -hmm. that has to bring them back to strength, first of all, before they start eating regular meals. Mm -hmm. So we are also providing supplementary feeding for people who have been found to be at risk or, or, or already malnourished. And then we are also... Um, providing uh, interventions in water sanitation and hygiene mm -hmm. uh, where we are re rehabilitating and drilling new boreholes and this is to ensure that these people are able to access water because okay. again if we come and bring you food mm -hmm. and and you don't have water that is also yeah, uh, that that is also another gap because absolutely. we are not really yeah, sure, helping you, sure. if you if you're going to take dirty water again mm -hmm. after you've eaten a very good meal because mm -hmm. you are still opening yourself to um, illnesses. Sure. So we are looking at interventions at uh, a number of areas, and these are basically to support these communities. Of course, of course the water facilities will be there for in the long term mm -hmm. because you have, uh, you have drilled a borehole, you come back 10 years later, it's still yeah. there and working. Yeah. Yeah. Those can be long term, but really when it comes to issues to do with food insecurity, mm -hmm. this is something that requires a long term intervention. Okay. Um, reports are coming in that government relief food hasn't hit the ground, but private relief food from people like you now has already hit the ground. It's really funny because now, um, yes, sometimes we really over point fingers towards the government, but uh, these reports are coming in that no relief food from the government has hit the ground. But private, like people who have a, this big heart, have already been there, delivered, gone. But but that's that's how it is. If you look at Haiti when they had the earthquake, if you look at if you look at Hurricane Katrina, and I'm citing instances outside Kenya so that Kenyans can see. You see, being humanitarian aid is not a government function mm -hmm. alone. Any person, any institution, any 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 agency mm -hmm. can be an agent for help okay yeah. because these people down at the ground their stomachs will not distinguish yeah. between government water and yeah. private water sure. they will not distinguish between red cross water mm -hmm. and water from yeah, fao sure. so we, we need to stop in you know in this country we talk too much politics yeah. kenyans talk too much if you go on yeah. twitter everybody is talking but no one is addressing the it's key issue wow, we need to stop talking too much in this country to be honest if we stopped to too much and voted right okay would the governors be doing what they're doing no it is clear in this country that you can murder a person and still be a governor that's how this country is and who are the people who vote for these people the same people who will then spend five years mm -hmm. complaining about mm -hmm. the person you voted mm -hmm. i've just seen that one of the people who was running for mp is among the people who had 17 billion shillings at mm -hmm. the bank mm -hmm. and at the same time in this country if you look at those people who are caught with 17 billion shillings, you will see almost five tribes represented there plus the 44th one which was added the other day. But our politicians will tell us the fight against corruption is tribal and we will believe them. This is the problem with our country. Mm -hmm. We are insane people trying to solve problems in an insane way okay. when our brothers okay. are dying. And, and this the is a problem. And, and the ballot boxes will actually reach their very no, fast. No, no. Let, let me tell you. <laughs> have you ever seen ballot boxes uh, delayed? They, 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 they don't <laughs> delay. They arrive on time. They arrive on time. Okay. Simply 
because of mm -hmm. what we prioritize in this country. Mm -hmm. Our priority in this country is politics. Mm -hmm. If you look at our news, three quarters of it is politics. Okay. You want to tell me, between Nyashinsky and Sonko, who's more popular in this country? Between Vera Sidika and Sonko, who's more popular? Our politicians are our socialites and our celebrities. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a problem in this country. Mm -hmm. And they're not socialites and celebrities mm -hmm. for the right thing. Okay. They're socialites and celebrities for saying DCI is wrong to investigate corruption. My yeah, friend, it's yeah, the Directorate yeah. of Criminal Investigations. Mm -hmm. In their description, okay. they are allowed to investigate any crime. Absolutely. So when you stand as a politician and say that, mm -hmm. how irresponsible is that? And that irresponsibility mm -hmm. is extended to every facet of Kenyan life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin, um, mm -hmm. solutions, because already there's a problem the political angle, very dirty, not very, so kind of uh, touchable. But now let's look at the solutions. Because as much as uh, even the um, the weatherman has said, indeed, this will kind of take, take long. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's unfortunate because you can believe how Nairobi and other areas in this country are hot. It and you very imagine very Turkan and Baringo, wow, that's kind of catastrophic. So what is being done as the humanitarian angle from you guys? Now, for the Kenya Red Cross, you know, we had we we first of all started by doing early actions before uh, that was like a month ago, in which we got some funding from uh, the British Red Cross and the IFRC, International okay. Federation of Red Cross. <coughs> okay. So what we've done is uh, we've uh, rolled out registration of communities who are affected, and currently, as we speak, we okay. have teams in. Uh, in Trukana, we have mm -hmm. teams in um, Garissa, Tana mm -hmm. River, about the initial eight counties that had been affected. Okay. And so yesterday we expanded that and, and uh, we are now asking for, we are now de developing an appeal for about um, 8 million CHF, which is like 800 million Kenya shillings, 8.8 .8, uh, million CHF. And uh, what we want to do is, is roll out the interventions I had mentioned to you earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, we are not doing cash everywhere okay. because what, what happens is that there are areas in which uh, there is a conflict and you realize people mm -hmm. cannot access markets. Mm -hmm. And we also plan to distribute in kind food. Okay. Like we, we take food and distribute to those people. Okay. And uh, in, in, in with support with the other sectors that I, mm -hmm. I had actually mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned something about, um, about uh, food from private uh, people getting to the ground. Mm -hmm. And for me, as he mentioned, that is a very good indicator because humanity is is what makes us human you, sure. you know humanitarian sure. it, it is basically um, me feeling that there is someone else who is sleeping hungry mm -hmm. and and there is something i can do about it and acting on it usually the first responders are actually private citizens it's not okay. usually it might not even be the red cross or, or the government usually mm -hmm. the person your neighbor yes. who has like you know an extra here. plate of food mm -hmm. yeah. who has a bottle of water is yeah. the one who can help you so we encourage them if, if okay. someone feels like that they can be able to support mm -hmm. we encourage them to take action because okay. Such small acts are actually what mm -hmm. makes a difference in the okay. lives of those people. Now, social media feedback, and of course, you can keep on sending your feedback and double two triple nine. You'll be sampling them. You have <coughs> a fandom post saying the government has turned to a blind eye in addressing the drought issue. They are beating around the bush, saying you're okay yet you're starving. But of course, another one who didn't mention his or her name said, no, the government is not doing enough. Now, already Kenyans are convinced that, in fact, when we talked about relief, food hasn't hit. Uh, the ground we're talking about now um some situations where by even the billions of shillings promised we haven't seen anything and um when we talk about a mugshot we talk about the mugshot guys are trying to compare some politicians in this country uh, with their mugshots in fact guys on social media went ahead and kind of just photoshopped their images mm. to a mugshot now, these are thieves trying just to kind of camouflage to be these nice people who are helping uh, the Turkana and Baringo counties. When you criminalize now our politicians also, do you think it's also fair to now push them to the corner as criminals? Yes, you talk about corruptions, billions of shillings being lost left and center, now criminalizing them in this, in this situation. Bichash. Let me ask a question. If indeed our political class are not corrupt. How then are billions of shillings stolen? Mm -hmm. If truly they are paragons of virtue, how is it then that during their watch we lose trillions of shillings annually? Mm -hmm. They are either criminal or incompetent. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. So, if I sit at the head of a ministry 
and something is stolen from my ministry. My job was to protect the Kenyan people mm -hmm. from that particular robbery. So if I am not part and parcel of that criminal activity, then I am definitely guilty of aiding and abetting. So I do not think we are criminalizing the politicians. We are asking them to do what their job description is. They are the representatives of the people. They hold the public trust. When they let down the public trust, it is not a question of criminality alone. Mm -hmm. It's a question of political and moral responsibility, okay. which they've run away from. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can tell me I'm CS of health. Something has happened in health and I'm innocent. What was I CS for? Mm -hmm. Today as we speak, I am not in my house. But if something happens in my house, mm -hmm. aren't I responsible? Mm -hmm. Or else, what is my fatherhood for? Sure. So sure. let's be clear. Mm -hmm. This African idea that we don't take responsibility when things happen because we are not directly affected by it is the kind of thinking that Najib Balala stood in front of TV and told us all to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I remember that. That is how they think mm -hmm. because what we assume <coughs> is anyone in government is not responsible for his actions mm -hmm. and yet we put him there to be responsible for his actions. Okay. So Kenyans are not doing a wrong thing in criminalizing these people because their attitude is you can go to hell. And clearly with this famine, some of us will, okay. <laughs> you see. Yeah. So let's be clear. Mm -hmm. If we do not hold them to account, because if they're not criminal, they're incompetent. Either way, mm -hmm. they need to be talking to us, either from okay. behind cells mm -hmm. or from their homes okay. having retired. Okay. Now, Kelvin, um, have there been any deaths reported? Yeah, we've received reports of people who've lost their lives. Okay. And, uh, you know, that has been attributed to the food insecurity. Should, should, should which, the CS maybe be liaising with, with the humanitarian organizations to get such figures? <laughs> it, it's important that yeah. I, I continue with that conversation because, yeah. you know, many times um, uh, they, they, when people are food insecure, uh -huh. So many other things come up, you know, yeah, yeah, there yeah. are illnesses that take, yes. that take advantage of, mm -hmm. of your weak body. And so we can rule out the fact that we have people and we've received reports actually from Trukana from our teams that uh, there are people who've lost their lives. And, and uh, you know, that has been attributed to uh, issues related to food insecurity. OK. Yep. OK. Well, the CS said no one lost his or her life in Trukana and it beats the logic because now I believe as a clear across society who are on the ground, they've seen everything. Why is the CS giving wrong information? Well, uh, I, 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 I am at pains to understand the strategic objective of denying death, okay? Because let's assume there are none. Let's assume there are none. Okay. Does it mean there is no problem? There's still a problem. Actually. Yes, you, you cannot yeah. equate the two. You cannot say just because someone has not e died, yeah, there's, there's no, no problem. problem. Sure. Because a human being that is suffering the ravages of hunger is a human being that has already been dehumanized. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay? It's, true that, it's yeah. a human being who's yeah. already under great duress. Mm -hmm. And that, my dear friend, mm -hmm. my dear CS, is an emergency. Okay, it does not matter that we're discussing about 800 going to a million Kenyans who are in that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't matter even if it was two Kenyans, it should cause you sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. Even if it is one Kenyan who caught the flu because he was sick and he died, that Kenyan should bug you. Mm -hmm. Whether it is one Kenyan who already had TB and because he had TB when he couldn't eat, he died, mm -hmm. that Kenyan should concern you. Sure, so sure. it is not a matter of counting deaths. Mm -hmm. How many people must die for it to be an emergency? Why was it an emergency when just, why don't we say, why are we worried about Ethiopian Airlines? The only 32 Kenyans out of 48 billion. Is wow. it, you know, why don't we have that conversation? <coughs> because if we are going to count emergencies mm -hmm. based on the people who died, mm -hmm. then clearly we are missing the point. Absolutely. Now, Kelvin, uh, as, we, as we wind up, um, for how long should we expect this to go on in terms of you know, the hardships uh, mm -hmm. in Baringo to you know, we received we received um, uh, a report from the Kenya Meteorological Department just uh, two, three days ago in which they are giving an update. What you realize is that the country has been experiencing a delayed onset of uh, rainfall. Usually it should have started in March, 
but you see we are now getting into 20th March, getting yeah. to the end of March and mm -hmm. still there is mm -hmm. no rains. Mm -hmm. This has been attributed to the cyclones that have been developing in the southern um, uh, parts of uh, Africa okay. and which have prevented rain making winds from you know blowing this side. And mm -hmm. uh, so from that forecast, what they say is that uh, we should expect a delayed onset. We, um, you know, we'll start having rains at the end of the month or early April. And what that means is that since the rainy season is usually from March to May, we will have a shorter period of rainfall. Mm -hmm. And so that means you might not have a full you know, circle in which you can plant and be able to harvest because if you are usually supposed to have three months and you're having two months, that mm -hmm. means you, it, it may not be able to support a full rain circle. Okay. And so we expect that to have an impact on the kind of harvest that we will have after, right. after right. the rains. Mm -hmm. But what is important also to note is that um, mm -hmm. Even if it rains today, mm -hmm. food insecurity will not disappear because it would usually take time before okay. before things you know start to improve. Okay. And so okay. for us, we are looking at the next uh, six months as, mm -hmm. as as a period in which the drought effects will continue to all persist. Right. All right. Yep. Thank you very much, Kelvin. And of course, very thank good. you so much, Mark. I wish you all the best in your new venture. It's not a new venture actually. It's a private humanitarian uh, assist yeah, course, talk to yes. to Baringo guys. Welcome. Of course, um, we're going to take a short break now. When we come back discussing about other issues of course we'll be keeping you updated on what's happening and um, whatever is happening in Baringo and of course in Turkana County on our subsequent bulletins that is 168 at Uhuru with Abul Ahmed and of course which 168 at 8 p.m. with Leangari we'll be having for you this periodic updates on what is happening on the ground of course when we come back now we want to talk about oral hygiene how <laughs> hygienic are you currently <laughs> sometimes can be really difficult to deal with some people yeah after the break. <laughs>